um, it feels somewhat like an invasion of British people, and for that I apologise. Um, there, there's, there's a whole bunch of very good reasons why we're all leaving the UK right now, which I'm sure you'll, uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll read about. Um, now, to, to just follow straight on from Peter's deck, um, I am actually optimistic, um, despite uh, what I'm going to tell you in the next 15 minutes. Um, we are actually doomed. And... Uh, we're, we're doomed for a number of reasons. I, I'm, I'm personally doomed because I've now realised I'm very old. Um, and this is, a, this is a genuine story. I was, um, my kids are now of the age, they're 10 and 8, and they said to me about a week ago, Dad, what do you actually do for a living? Um, so, so beyond saying basically write emails and, uh, and talk a lot, um, I did try and explain that I make advertising. And they said genuinely, what's an advert? So I made them watch terrestrial TV because we haven't watched a huge amount since we've been in Canada. Um, and they sat there and they just looked at me and said, Dad, your job's stupid. <laughs> and, and they had a point because they've grown up not watching adverts. And I've grown up in my industry, in my, my business for 20 plus years, spending an inordinately large amount of time and other people's money advertising. And why are we doomed? Well, a lot of stuff's happened. And I said, I'm old. I remember when I could run a TV advert and I would generate 100,000 phone calls. Seriously, it, it's happened. I, I couldn't possibly do that today. I remember the easiest job in the world was the fact I only had two TV channels on which I could spend money on. It was easy. Now there must be literally thousands. So we've got fragmentation, and we don't have any more money. So we've got to do more with the same money across more channels and more even uh, uh, opportunities, because the whole rise of digital, there's digital radio, there's digital everything, it's just exploded. But I haven't got any more money. Accountability has increased because of this dreadful digital thing. Yeah? Everybody assumes that you can measure every last dollar. It's still not true. And our attention spans are less and less and less. And I was reading only the other day. Um, I, obviously, I didn't give it much time because <laughs> there was a study done in 2016 in Canada, an original piece of research, and I'm sure you have maybe have read about it, that said the average attention span of a Canadian consumer is now eight seconds. A goldfish genuinely is nine. And, and this is what the world is happening. And it's not just Canadians have low attention span. It's, it's everybody and it's everything. Now, what was I saying? Um, <laughs> and of course, marketers actually really are with the enemy. We, we have, excuse my French, completely and utterly screwed ourselves. Because as soon as something good comes along, we're all over it like a rash. I remember when Facebook used to be a good thing, right? Now I have to peel through tons of advertising to actually get to anything I actually was there for in, in the first place. The first display advert that was ever run on the internet had a click-through rate of something like 75%. Now it's like 0.075%, and, and we think that's good. We are playing on tiny, tiny margins because we pile in as marketers. We ruin everything. As soon as we think there's an audience to go buy, we go buy it, and we commercialize it, and, and we basically screw it. Absolutely, and we make for a bad product. So as a result of that, we're completely and utterly doomed. What hope is there? Well, in my industry, it's not just how I spend money I worry about. My whole industry is being disrupted, and I don't have enough time to go into this today, but you know, we're, we're facing a number of challenges. And I just want you to understand the stuff that I have to worry about as a guy running a, you know, trying to build an auto brand. When I've got dealers that are still selling stuff in the same way they did 100 years ago, and with consumers that are used to doing things in a very different way and we're very slow to move to catch up with how consumers want to behave. The fact that people are going to stop buying cars and we're going to pay to use them and not buy them, well, we we're going to struggle with that. And then eventually, when these things start driving themselves, what's the point of an automotive brand? Because people are going to buy cars like they buy hotel rooms. So we've got these three structural challenges in industry, plus we're worried about how we sell more cars today. So I, I don't know how I get up in the morning. But despite all that, we do like TV, and the reason we like it is because regardless of anything else, there's loads and loads of studies to tell us that it works. I've been hearing this for, 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 the, for the 20, 30 years of my career, and the industry's been saying this for the last 50 or 60 years, as so long as commercial TV has uh, existed. But this was a report that I found on the internet the other day, Group M, apparently quite popular. Um, the, the study reveals the hidden effects of TV. Now, don't you think there's something wrong with that headline? There's a study that reveals the hidden effects of TV. 
Now, I can't read this because I said I'm old, but something like it's, uh, it, it basically says that 45% uh, of all Facebook interactions are caused by TV. It's the best thing for short-term and medium-term and long-term branding and brand consideration. Well, we've known all this for years, but it's still hidden. And of course, the argument we have about why TV is a great thing is its reach. You go, brilliant, I can, I can speak to everybody. But here's the maths that matter to me. So there's 36.3 million Canadians. I try and keep up with the maths, and if anybody can stick their hand up and get to the figure at the bottom, they get a prize. I don't know what it is, but I'll work it out. But there's 36.3 million Canadians, and every year 1.9 million of them buy a new car, which is 5.2% of that audience. Now, we only sell to 50% of that market because we don't have pickup trucks or, or sell to rednecks. Um, and <laughs> you see, I'm British. I can say anything I want, right? Um, so that really, that 5.2 becomes 2.6%. And because we are a sales, retail-driven, we need it this month type of a company, uh, there's no shame in that, divide that number by 12. So of 36.3 million Canadians, that is massive reach, that's great, we only really want to support to 0.215% of them in any one month. Because next month, my message has changed, I need to talk to them differently. Now, I'm not going to try and embarrass the audience by asking you to stick your hand up and tell me who wants a car this weekend. Because of 250 people here, there's probably not one. And yet, the reach argument means that I'm compelled to spend money on a media that actually I don't need to speak to over 99% of the people that you're selling me the benefit to. So, as an advertiser, I'm convinced it's a good thing to do. As a businessman, mm, I don't know. But, digital's my savior, right? Except, digital, if you think TV's complicated and fragmented, you want to be looking at this to try and understand it, right? So all the same things that we had that I worry about, about fragmentation, where do I choose? Where do I put my money? How do I account for it? How do I make sure people have the attention span? You think TV advertising is bad to try and get people to sit and watch a 30-second spot. You know, even Facebook talk about f um, thumb-flicking attention-grabbing stuff. You know, if you get two seconds on a video of you on Facebook, it's done well. That, that's crazy. Um, especially as I've got a complicated message to sell to somebody who's going to potentially spend $35,000 with me. I can't do that in two seconds. So then you're talking about scale. You've got the attention issue again. Of course, we are the enemy because, once again, we've screwed every possible thing that seems to have got scale, right? So we haven't really helped ourselves um, make this media relevant, interesting, and useful. But what digital does do is it does give me some direct trackability, to make up a word, of, of my dollars. Yeah, that's, that's what everybody understands digital to be good at. Except for, we are in the Wild West right now in terms of digital. If I had enough time in the day, I'd be really worried about this fraud stuff that I keep reading about. The fact that my minuscule conversions are in point something of a percentage, and we're playing literally, as I said before, on, on, on very, very thin margins. And the fact that views really are not viewers. You can't honestly tell me that I can engage somebody for two seconds and get my message across compared to a 30-second advert or an hour-long documentary or them sat there watching a 60-second cinema advert in the dark with a bowl of popcorn as an avid viewer. So people seeing stuff online in an ad format is really not the same as in other formats. But there's a whole industry out there that's trying to convince me and my boss that it is, right? And my boss doesn't spend enough time thinking about this stuff, so he keeps coming to my desk saying, more digital, more digital. And I'm saying, more engagement, more engagement. We need to find a way to make this stick, really. And of course, there is no universal standard for measurement, so at least you, we, we've got AC Nielsen. I can trust that, because we've all been using that for years and years and years, and we've got Barb and all these other great things, right? Nothing in digital has that same kind of ongoing credibility. And the main digital players, now I'm getting really moany, this is great, I'm enjoying it, it's very cathartic up here. <laughs> there is no interest in the digital industry coming together and having universal standard. And if you don't believe me, go listen to Mark Pritchard of, uh, of P&G, who, uh, who spoke very eloquently about this only a, only a few months ago. Although, despite all of that, I think genuinely TV would benefit from more discipline in terms of trying to work out why what you guys are selling is actually worth buying. And I'll go back to that Group M report and that, that little snippet I showed a couple of slides back, okay? That was an industry-wide study. What we as advertisers now need, advertisers of scale, 
is for the industry to come and prove to us individually, I think, genuinely, within our business model and our business challenges, how their product is really helping us. Because I think the industry takes a lot for granted about the, the goodwill and the scale and the reach and all those great other arguments. Um, because measurement today, certainly in my industry, is still mostly supposition and coincidence. I genuinely know that if you go and ask our 216 dealers at Hyundai across Canada what their source of inquiry is, I guarantee you your average salesperson will still tell you to this day that it's the yellow pages or the Canadian equivalent. It's somebody looked me up in the local phone book, right? Because that, that's what's going on in the UK. It was always the way. So we can't trust our dealers to tell us what the source of inquiry is. We, we, have no, we, we, we are very disconnected from, from that process. But in the years that I've been doing this, I've heard about all this interesting stuff that the industry talks about, like household profiling. Great. We'll be able to tell you which households we can, we can target and who's watching the TV adverts. You go, great, tell me. People aren't. Viewer surveys. More data about the people that actually watch the TV adverts. It's not there. Dynamic ad serving, that sounds great. Serving particular adverts to certain people watching certain programming streams on boxes. So two households are watching different adverts during the same programming break. Sounds amazing. I still haven't seen it, really. Platform chasing, this is my favorite one right now. So what is different in Canada, uh, I've noticed, to, 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 to where I come from in the UK, is actually you have prov providers who, who, who go end to end. You've got people that sell you the TV, that sell you the, uh, the, 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 the mobile phone, that sell you the internet. And the ability to chase those people through and find out what they actually did, well, that, awesome, that's what every marketer wants. But how do we actually really turn that into credible results and something that relates to me? And I think we, we'd, we'd love to be able to spend more time understanding that and getting to that point. And ultimately, because, because really we're, we're quite lazy on client side, um, that's why we have agencies, right? Um, I need you to do it for me. So we have post-buy reports today about that TV that basically tells me how much I managed to drive the price down. Oh, fantastic. And I'm going to show you why that's not such a good thing in a minute. Um, and, and this is where you get optimistic for a second. Um, but if you can do it for me, give me a post-buy that matters. Show me how many cars I sold because I spent two, three, four, five million dollars with you last month. That's all we need, right? So that's about measurement, and that's about what I need to do to keep spending money. Um, my observations, and these are my observations really, are that um, is the product we are selling, uh, or you are selling, actually getting worse and worse? I'll come back to this point. Marketers ruin everything, right? And I know I'm partly responsible uh, for this as a, as a client advertiser. But Google's name is up there, not because it's a play about digital. It's, I just wanted to share something with you as a piece of wisdom that at least I thought was wise when somebody told me, which was um, the fundamental principle of Google's business model is about being relevant. And that's actually not a bad lesson for any business, because if what you're selling is relevant to the people that you're trying to sell it to, you will be successful. If you become irrelevant, like my kids think my job is, you will not be successful. So how can you make your product more relevant to the audience you're trying to attract? Because if you push them away with something that's irrelevant and they have better options, we all suffer. Me as a client, because I lose that reach and that targeting and all those great Group M type things that apparently I get from TV. Um, and you suffer, of course, because um, you have less audience and therefore you have less opportunity to make money. It is, it's very simple. So how do we make the product better? And just some observations from my point of view, uh, and genuinely, I cannot sit and watch a movie on terrestrial Canadian TV. Now, I'm not used to it, because I'm British, so if I want to watch a film uninterrupted, I turn the BBC on. It's, it's easy, I have that choice. Maybe here, not so much. But the cartoon says it all. You get so many adverts, so frequently, you just, you just literally, you lose the plot of the, of the movie. It, it's unwatchable. You're driving an audience away, I think, with this. So how could we think about whether there's a way to justify a model that has fewer adverts to make watching that, that, that content more, more feasible for the consumer? So can you make the advertising content more meaningful, more relevant? So I'm sat there watching uh, MasterChef, for example. Well, I say watching it, it's on, I have to watch it. Um, kids are addicted. Um, I, I want to see adverts about blenders and food and this, that, and the other. I, I don't need to see air conditioning pump advertising or whatever else it is. So is there a more selective, relevant way to think about it? I, I don't know whether there's rules in place, but, but could there be? An exclusivity and selectiveness. 
Would I, as an advertiser, pay for a more relevant audience and a more relevant stream with fewer competition? Do you know what? Actually, I think I would. And I know it's my fault because I push and push and push and push. I'm on CPP. But would I pay more for higher quality, higher engagement, and a better audience? Probably would, because I know I've got a problem with attention. And how can I solve that? Well, that's probably down to actually grabbing attention in a more valuable way. And, you know, we talk about big screen expertise, uh, and Peter just talked very knowledgeably about content production. Now, you guys are masters at this. The, the, the TV industry, well, leverage what you're good at. And there are things that you can do, I think, that will help leverage us that, 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 that will really help. So one of the things that I, I personally love is, is kind of creativity about how we use it. How do you get our message in a relevant way to your audience in a way that's not just about uh, hammering them with a 30-second spot which they tune out to? And there, there are lots of opportunities. You've heard about these things for years. Uh, there's one I wanted to share with you today that I saw when I was uh, preparing for this speech. And personally, I, I thought it was brilliant. But it's where the you can kind of imagine what Peter was saying about this dialogue and strategy and collaboration, that that's, that's what drove this particular uh, thing to, to actually happen. And, and it really is collaborative, I think, about um, how the product is perfectly integrated with the channel and the content. Um, but of course, sponsorships that are meaningful is one thing. Um, you know, the other famous British person, uh, James Bond, uh, a master of, um, of product placement. Um, uh, you know, and I'm not saying we need to do that, but, but subtle product placement, it does work. I can see how that works over time. And of course, the real masters of kind of creating advertiser-funded programming and content, of course, are Red Bull. And we at Hyundai are probably or hopefully big enough to have that meaningful dialogue with you as broadcasters and you as the industry to say, well, how, how, how can we make some of this magic happen for us? How can, how can we work around the CanCon opportunity in your production thing to actually integrate ourselves into what people are watching in a more meaningful way. But I just wanted to show you the first example, which I think was uh, just to explain those people that are not from Britain, and I know there aren't many of you here today that aren't from Britain, um, is that Channel 4 is the second largest terrestrial uh, TV channel in the UK, and they did a partnership with the, uh, the Lego Corporation to launch the latest Lego Batman movie. And instead of running a standard 30-second spot ad, what they actually did was take over the station announcer spot so that, um, for, for the rest of the evening, uh, with what I thought was actually quite a cool integration. But if we could play the film very quickly. It's only 30 seconds, obviously. Hey, Batman here. Strap in for the best dark night of your life because I'm taking over these announcements at Channel 4. Up next, something awesome but not as awesome as me, because I'm Batman, and you're not. There we go. Very, very simple, but I love the idea that Channel 4 were willing to come to the table and say, you know what? You guys can sponsor our channel. You can take over the, the announcements and the, the, the continuity uh, claim all, 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 or for the rest of the evening or the week or however long they did it. I, I think that was very interesting. Something I hadn't really seen very, very frequently. Don't worry, I'm getting to the end. Right. So, um, in summary, um, I would uh, make a request to you, uh, hence linking back to the fact that I asked for help uh, right at the front. So, um, please, um, focus as an industry on being relevant to your audience. Don't, don't drive them away. They've got plenty of other places to go right now. And, um, you know, I need you to have a good audience and people to come back to TV. So, please think about the relevancy of the product that you are offering to the people that you are trying to sell us advertising to see. Secondly, um, please put more effort into proving your worth. We know it's there, but my job's becoming harder and harder in terms of trying to justify it. And just to emphasize, Hyundai do like TV. We are trying to spend more of our media mix on TV um, than, than ever before. We, we, we like it, but you need to help us keep doing that. Um, and that's about proving your worth. And then the third very personal request is uh, please go easy on the questions. Thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you, Lawrence. That was a really interesting presentation. Um, you're right, we're all trying to get out of Britain at the moment, so if anyone wants to give me a job, my CV is available later. I'm only joking, there's people from Videology here, but I am serious. Um, Lawrence, um, you asked for a lot of things. You asked for um, household profiling, you asked for addressability, dynamic ad insertion, cross-channel planning, um, fewer adverts, objective measurement, what are you willing to give back? 
Are you willing to shift more spend to TV if broadcasters do this? Uh, well, I, I think I just said that we're already doing that. Um, I think we would, we would, we would move more. Um, I think what I would love, uh, and my office door is literally open, and we make this invitation uh, whenever we get the opportunity to do so, is you know, if you can bring us creativity and engagement and a new way of thinking about how to engage with the audience, which is, is different from what we've been selling year after year after year, we're, 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 we'll look at it. We're, we're very open. We're, we're inviting it. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, what would I give up? I mean, I, I'd give up a CPP evaluation for a higher level of um, committed engagement. Um, so there I'm you have it, everyone. And just to add that, I, my, my media planning guy is, is in the room, and I've probably completely screwed his uh, opportunity for next year but, by saying that, but I genuinely think it's true. So firm commitment to a plus 20% spend on TV, I, I heard. No, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> but, um. Um, is there any... Um, we have time for one question from the audience. Anybody? Remember my uh, third David. request. That was great. Thank you very much. Um, one small question. You mentioned at one point that your boss keeps coming to you and saying more digital. Why do you think that is? Sorry, could you repeat the question? Yeah, you mentioned at one point that your boss keeps coming to you and saying more digital. Why do you think that is? Um, I think there's, a, there's an obvious trend. There's the... Um, you know, we, we all get swept along with the, um, the, the, the assumption of, of, of what these things represent. And, you know, part of it is because the only really serious metrics that I can show him that I have at my exposure is, right, well, this is how many web clicks we got. This is how many, the click-through rate. We spent this on digital and that happened. You know, we, were having a, we, had, we had our review yesterday of our, of our SEM spend. And, you know, we're starting to track phone calls that, that come off SEM ads and all this sort of stuff that, as I keep saying, if you go ask the dealers their source of inquiry, they don't, they don't tell you TV. So what people hear and what we can see is, is, is going to guide marketing spend because we, we are inherently um, probably driven by a degree of security. And there is security in fact. And the facts we have relate to digital. Now, as I said earlier, I have to take them with a degree of a pinch of salt quite a big pinch right now, because I know there's fraud and there's bots and all this crap that's going on and you can't really completely trust. But as, as the point I was trying to make is that there is some trackability to the spend. And if that trackability is not there with the other thing that we're spending just as much money on, the, the security and the herd mentality will take us towards digital. And, that, and that's, that's the thing, because I can, I can demonstrate something there. I can demonstrate very little on TV that's, that, that's, that, that, that's, that's as obvious and as tangible. So I think it's a lot to do with that. Um, plus, he's on Facebook, which, which doesn't really help. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Lawrence. A round of applause, everybody. <laughs>